Welcome to our channel, where we delve into the intricate world of fitted clauses and their implications in construction and engineering projects. Today, we're embarking on a detailed exploration of Clause 14.4, Schedule of Payments from the Fittick Yellow Book 1999. Whether you're a professional in the field, a student of engineering or construction management, or simply someone with a keen interest in understanding the complexities of international construction contracts, you're in the right place. Our journey through this clause will unravel the nuances of managing financial transactions and construction projects, providing clarity and insights into this vital aspect of contract management. So, grab your notepad, get comfortable, and join us as we unravel the essentials of Clause 14.4. Don't forget to subscribe and like our channel to stay updated with more content like this, crafted to enhance your understanding and expertise. Purpose of Clause 14.4 Let's explore the purpose of Clause 14.4 in the Fiddick Yellow Book, titled Schedule of Payments. Its essence lies in offering a clear, structured approach to managing the financial aspects of construction projects. It does this in two ways, by utilizing a predefined schedule of payments or, in its absence, by depending on the submission of non-binding estimates. This clause acts as a financial compass, guiding the payment processes and ensuring that they align smoothly with the overall contract execution. Implications of Clause 14.4 Delving into the implications of Clause 14.4, we see its significant impact on the structure and management of payments. This clause introduces predictability and adaptability into the financial framework of a project. Whether it's through the predefined installments in the schedule of payments or the quarterly estimates, this clause ensures that payments are closely aligned with the project's progress and key milestones. This alignment is crucial for maintaining a balanced and fair financial landscape throughout the project's life cycle. Understanding the dynamics of payments, delving into clause 14.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book, a. Installments as estimated contract values. Let's demystify Clause 14.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book, starting with the concept of installments as estimated contract values. When a schedule of payments is part of the contract, it lays out specific installments for the contract price. These aren't just random figures, they are considered the estimated contract values for the purposes of sub-clause 14.3, which deals with application for interim payment certificates. This connection between the schedule and valuation process brings a level of clarity and predictability to the financial dealings within the contract, ensuring that everyone is on the same page regarding payment expectations. b. Exclusion of sub-clause 14.5 Another intriguing aspect of clause 14.4 is its explicit exclusion of sub-clause 14.5. Why is this significant? Well. Subclause 14.5 covers plant and materials intended for the works. When a schedule of payments is active, the specific provisions of 14.5 don't apply. This delineation clarifies the financial framework within which the parties operate, ensuring there's no ambiguity about the applicability of various clauses depending on the payment structure in place. C. Flexibility in case of divergence from planned progress. Project execution is often dynamic, and sometimes, the actual progress doesn't align with the planned installments in the schedule of payments. Clause 14.4 accounts for this reality. If such a divergence occurs, the engineer, wielding the authority granted under sub-clause 3.5, determinations, can agree to or determine revised installments. This flexibility is crucial, allowing the payment structure to adapt to the project's actual pace, rather than being rigidly tied to a predefined schedule. Contract without schedule of payments. What happens in the absence of a schedule of payments? In this situation, the contractor must submit non-binding estimates of payments expected during each quarterly period. The first estimate, due within 42 days of the project's commencement, sets the precedent for future submissions. This estimation process continues until the taking over certificate for the works is issued. In contracts lacking a predefined payment schedule, this approach offers a structured yet adaptable way to manage and anticipate financial obligations. Primary Aspects of Clause 14.4 Installments and Contract Value 
the installments stated in the schedule of payments are not mere figures, they are treated as the estimated contract values for the purpose of interim payment certificates. This aspect underlines the importance of the schedule of payments in shaping the financial expectations and obligations within the project. Exclusion of Clause 14.5 A notable feature of Clause 14.4 is its stipulation that if a schedule of payments is included in the contract, Clause 14.5, which deals with plant and materials intended for the works, becomes non-applicable. This exclusion simplifies the financial arrangement and prevents any overlap or confusion regarding which clauses govern the payments. Adjustments based on progress, the clause also recognizes that project execution may not always align with the planned schedule. Therefore, if the actual progress deviates from the planned installments, the engineer is empowered to revise these installments, taking into account the actual progress versus the initial estimates. This provision ensures that the payment schedule remains relevant and reflective of the on-ground reality. Non-binding estimates for contracts without a schedule, in scenarios where the contract doesn't include a schedule of payments, the contractor must provide quarterly non-binding estimates of the expected payments, starting from 42 days after the commencement date and continuing until the taking over certificate is issued. This approach maintains a steady flow of financial planning and estimation throughout the project duration. Key Considerations in Implementing Clause 14.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book Clarity on Payment Structure A critical aspect of effectively navigating Clause 14.4 is ensuring the schedule of payments is crystal clear and accurately reflects the project's realistic milestones. This clarity is paramount as it sets the stage for all financial transactions and expectations throughout the project lifecycle. The schedule of payments should be a detailed roadmap, guiding both the contractor and the employer through the financial journey of the project. Monitoring progress. Closely linked to the payment structure is the need for vigilant monitoring of project progress against the schedule of payments. This monitoring is not just a periodic check-in, it's an ongoing process that helps in identifying any discrepancies or deviations early on. Regular assessment ensures that the financial aspects of the project are always aligned with the actual physical progress on the ground. Communication with the engineer. Open and continuous communication with the engineer is vital, especially when project progress doesn't align with the planned schedule. The engineer plays a crucial role in determining any necessary adjustments to the payment schedule. Therefore, maintaining a transparent and proactive dialogue with the engineer can facilitate smoother and more effective management of any changes that need to be made. Flexibility for adjustments. In the dynamic environment of construction projects, flexibility is key, especially regarding financial arrangements. Parties involved should be prepared for potential adjustments in payment installments. These adjustments might be necessary if the project's actual progress does not align with the initial estimates. Being adaptable and responsive to such changes can help in maintaining the financial equilibrium of the project, ensuring that the payment structure remains fair and reflective of the actual work done. Interaction of Clause 14.4 with other clauses in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 1. Interaction with Clause 14.3 Application for Interim Payment Certificates Shared Effect Clause 14.4 directly references sub-paragraph A of Clause 14.3, indicating that the installments in the schedule of payments are considered as the estimated contract values for interim payments. Implication This interaction ensures that the payment schedule is aligned with the actual progress of the works, as reflected in the interim payment applications. 2. Interaction with Clause 14.5, Plant and Materials Intended for the Works. Exclusion Clause Clause 14.4 explicitly states that if a schedule of payments is included in the contract, Clause 14.5 does not apply. Implication This means that payments for plant and materials intended for the works are not separately considered when a schedule of payments is in place. 3. Interaction with Clause 3.5 Determinations Revision of installments Clause 14.4 allows the engineer, under the provisions of Clause 3.5, to revise the installments based on the actual progress of the works. Implication This interaction provides a mechanism for adjusting payments in response to variations in the progress of the works, ensuring that the payment schedule remains fair and reflective of the actual work done. 4. Interaction with Clause 14.7 Payment Payment timelines 
The schedule of payments outlined in Clause 14.4 is subject to the payment timeline specified in Clause 14.7. Implication This ensures that the payments are made within the stipulated time frames, providing financial security to the contractor. 5. Varied phrasings to elaborate shared effects. Synchronized financial management. The interaction between Clause 14.4 and other clauses ensures synchronized financial management throughout the project lifecycle. Dynamic payment adjustment. The ability to revise payment schedules based on actual progress, as facilitated by Clause 14.4 in conjunction with Clause 3.5, can be termed as dynamic payment adjustment. Integrated payment framework. The collective application of Clause 14.4 with Clauses 14.3, 14.5, and 14.7 forms an integrated payment framework, ensuring that payments are reflective of the actual work and contractual agreements. 6. Interaction of Clause 14.4 with Clause 20. I. Basis for claims. Claims related to payment schedule. Discrepancies or disputes arising from the schedule of payments as outlined in Clause 14.4 can become the basis for claims under Clause 20. Implication. If the contractor feels that the payment schedule is not being adhered to or is unfair, they may raise a claim under the provisions of Clause 20. 2. Dispute Resolution Resolving payment disputes, any dispute related to the interpretation or application of the schedule of payments in Clause 14.4 would be resolved through the mechanisms provided in Clause 20. Implication This ensures a formal process for addressing and resolving disputes related to payment schedules, providing a structured approach to conflict resolution. 3. Arbitration for Unresolved Disputes Final resort for payment disputes, if disputes related to the schedule of payments cannot be resolved through initial dispute resolution mechanisms, arbitration as outlined in Clause the 20th of may be sought. Implication, this serves as a final resort to resolve complex disputes regarding payment schedules, ensuring that unresolved issues are addressed through a formal arbitration process. Varied phrasings to elaborate shared effects. Payment schedule dispute resolution, the interaction between Clause 14.4 and Clause 20 provides a clear pathway for resolving disputes related to payment schedules. Arbitration as a safety net for payment conflicts, the role of Clause 20 in addressing unresolved disputes from Clause 14.4 can be seen as providing an arbitration safety net for complex payment conflicts. Integrated Claims Management, the collective application of Clause 14.4 with Clause 20 forms an integrated claims management framework, ensuring that any disagreements over payment schedules are handled effectively. The interaction between Clause 14.4 and Clause 20 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 is crucial for managing and resolving disputes related to payment schedules. This interaction ensures that there are formal and structured mechanisms in place for addressing claims and disputes arising from payment-related issues, thereby safeguarding the interests of both the contractor and the employer in the construction contract. Understanding this interaction is essential for effective contract management under the FIDIC framework. Sequence Diagram Narrative – Managing Payments under Clause 14.4 in the FIDIC Yellow Book Contractor's Submission – Quarterly Estimates – The contractor initiates the process by submitting quarterly estimates of the expected payments. Engineers Review – Approval Process – These estimates are then reviewed and approved by the engineer, ensuring they align with the contract terms and work progress. Employer's Role – Communicating Approval Upon the engineer's approval, the employer communicates this approved payment schedule to the financial manager. This step is crucial for aligning the financial management with the approved estimates. Payment Issuance Releasing payments, the financial manager, armed with the approved schedule, issues payments to the contractor accordingly. This step ensures that the financial transactions are in sync with the agreed upon schedule. Progress Reporting Contractors report, simultaneously, the contractor reports on the progress of the works to the engineer. This report is vital for assessing the alignment of work progress with the payment schedule. Assessment of progress, engineer's comparison, the engineer assesses the actual progress and compares it to the progress estimated in the payment schedule. This comparison is key in determining if the payment schedule remains relevant. Adjustment of installments. Revising installments. If the actual progress is less than the estimated, the financial manager may request the engineer to revise the installments. The engineer then determines revised installments based on the actual progress. Notification of revised installments. Informing the contractor, 
the engineer notifies the contractor of the revised installments, ensuring transparency and adherence to the revised schedule. Contractor's adjustment. Adapting to changes, finally, the contractor adjusts to the revised payment schedule as per the engineer's determination. This adaptability is essential for maintaining contractual compliance and financial balance. In conclusion, the sequence diagram for Clause 14.4 in the FIDIC Yellow Book encapsulates a structured and dynamic process for managing payments in construction projects. From the contractor's initial submission of quarterly estimates to the final adjustment to revised installments, each step is interconnected and crucial for ensuring a smooth financial flow. This sequence not only reflects the contractual obligations but also the practical realities of project execution, emphasizing the importance of continuous monitoring, communication, and flexibility. Adhering to this structured approach ensures that payments are aligned with actual progress, thereby maintaining financial integrity and trust among all parties involved. Now for better understanding of this clause, we have prepared a flowchart to make you understand the process. Start. The process begins with the initiation of the flowchart. Review contract. The first step involves reviewing the contract to understand its terms and conditions. Schedule of payments included. This decision point determines whether the contract includes a schedule of payments. Apply installments as estimated contract values. If the schedule of payments is included, the installments mentioned in the schedule are applied as the estimated contract values. Exclude Clause 14.5. The application of Clause 14.5, plant and materials intended for the works, is excluded if the schedule of payments is included. Installments defined by actual progress? This decision point checks if the installments are defined by the actual progress of the works. Continue defined installments. If the installments are defined by actual progress, the process continues with these defined installments. Revise installments based on actual progress. If the installments are not defined by actual progress, the engineer may revise the installments based on the actual progress achieved. Submit quarterly non-binding estimates. If the schedule of payments is not included, the contractor is required to submit non-binding estimates of the payments expected to become due during each quarterly period. First estimate due within 42 days of commencement. The first estimate should be submitted within 42 days after the commencement date. Submit revised estimates quarterly. Revised estimates should be submitted at quarterly intervals until the taking over certificate for the works is issued. And the process concludes at this point. In wrapping up our exploration of Clause 14.4, Schedule of Payments in the FIDIC Yellow Book, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you for joining us on this insightful journey. Your engagement and support play a pivotal role in enabling us to continue providing educational content like this. If you found value in today's discussion and are eager for more enlightening content, I invite you to subscribe and like our channel. Your subscription not only keeps you updated with our latest content but also empowers us to delve deeper into the fascinating world of fitted clauses. So, I'm curious, will you join our growing community of learners and enthusiasts? Your support is the key to unlocking a wealth of knowledge and insights. Subscribe and like today, and let's continue this educational journey together.